Okay, here we go. Um, we're going to talk about social um, network analysis. And social network analysis is a fairly advanced uh, sociological tool, but it's it's brand new, so I thought I would add it to the curriculum in the class, just in case anybody ever moves on in sociology, they'll be familiar with it. Um, and so we're just going to get right into it. I'm only going to do about a 15-minute um, narration of this. Maybe not even that. We'll see. Um, you know, social network analysis is um, uses sophisticated uh, computer software to map social networks and groups um, and um, and as a matter of fact um, we're going to talk about how we I use that word incorrectly just now we don't in social network analysis we don't think about groups anymore we think of as people in groups as networks now so we've used to use this word groups quite a bit and now we've gone to the word network um, we're going to talk about how it's a powerful way to explore explore social relationships. Uh, and then there's a little exercise at the end that, um, depending on what class you're in of mine, uh, we may or may not do. Okay? So, um, going from groups to networks. In sociology, we used to talk about groups uh, as small, local, clearly bounded. There's something that brought them together. Tightly knit groups, such as households, villages, small work groups, clubs, sports clubs, social clubs, these types of things. And now we're seeing society increasingly turn into um, a collection of networks. Um, things are, are broader, bigger, more far flung. That is, they're spread out more. They're more diverse than people that belong to these networks. It's more fluid. People go in and out, in and out of them. Um, they don't, uh, they're less overlapping with other things. They're really sp specific networks. Um, and, uh, and and social networks are included in this, um, but it's not just social networks. Um, this is George Simmel. He was a very very famous sociologist. In fact, he's one of my favorites. Um, and he would talk about um, how uh, we're changing from a concentric integration to segmented integration. What does that mean? We used to think of the person in the middle here, and then the closest thing around them was their family then their rel farther relatives, then their community, then their country. And that's how we used to like envision graphically how our lives were. And now we're realizing it's more of this intertwining of different types of networks that kind of revolve around each other, that it's not just cleanly segmented like that, um, or it's not just cleanly concentric like that. It's more segmented, rather. Uh, so that's, that's w you know, the difference between segmented and concentric integration. Everything's integrated. It's just that there's different patterns. And sim Simmel, you can see when he, ex when he he was writing way back then and he was picking all that stuff out. It's pretty cool. This is, in fact, how things have progressed and have changed. Um, we have widespread... What are the reasons for these changes in the ways that people relate to each other? We have widespread connectivity. You know, if sociology didn't keep up and didn't get some theories about why... Um, you know, how things are changing uh, with the advent of the internet, um, we'd be lost. And, and sociology always needs to change to the societal uh, conditions that, that we live in. Uh, we have high speed, broadly affordable travel. That's a big thing, travel. Um, it spreads social networks beyond cities, regions, and nations. It's way more cheap than it ever has been before, and it's faster, getting faster and faster. Um, you know, wait for the train to go in California, it's going to be incredibly fast. Rapid growth of affordable telecommunications. This is that goes without saying. <laughs> uh, that that's why we need social network analysis to to see how we're interacting differently than ever we have ever before. We have a common goals such as global peace, economic and political globalization, and the spread of trade. All these things are bringing people together from countries, and they've driven commercial and social interconnectedness as well. This is a a, a map of social network analysis done on hubs on clusters in, of industries um, and you can see uh, these are all direct communications um, with different areas uh, and it's uh, it's fascinating to see uh, how these uh, hubs cluster as people in industries trade and talk amongst each other it's very very fascinating that's an example of what a social network map looks like we also have weaker boundaries. Um, our families are, are smaller, um, divorce, remarriage, increasing female participation in paid work. All these things um, are weakening uh, the structure of this typical family structure as we knew it. 
and we have more flexible work organization online working people working from home you know just look at your online classes I mean that was something that we never had before so things are more flexible than they've ever been open and, and informal networks of civic involvement and new social movements um, so it's easier to get involved with things you, you, you know especially with the internet you, you can easily join clubs uh, you don't have to have someone recommend something to you you can actually go search for it yourself um, all these things are are changing the structure of our society as we know it um, and thus in get making us have to examine networks as opposed to groups um, increased personal autonomy we can we can choose you know what we're doing more and more and more on our own we're not we have personal autonomy in, in, in the choice of how we live our lives um, you know the welfare state pensions comprehensive school and child care system all of these things have enabled enabled the personal Per, you know, for us to have more choices than we ever had, um, it, it's more freedom. This is an interesting thing, though. It also has a burden. When you have more choices, it's hard for people to choose what the right thing is to do. Uh, and thus, we have you know people telling us everything: what to eat, how to think, what pills to take, when to sleep. I mean, just look at all the information about we need professionals to tell us what to do because we have so many choices. It used to be you only had a few choices in your life: where you worked, who you married you know oh, <laughs> that kind of thing, you know the house you buy or whatever if you could afford one uh, but now there's m what kind of cheese do you buy at the store do you buy low fat non-fat full milk skim milk I mean there's like 10 different types of choices of milks fasting so this autonomy that we have um, is uh, changing how we so we interact with each other as well we, we're not as needing needy needy <laughs> rather of other people as we used to be um, we are increasingly becoming individualistic in our values and interests. We're not going to groups. You know, you see more third party, fourth party things happening in politics all the time. Um, let's see. Uh, we don't really need to talk about any of this, so I'll move on. Um, we have computer mediated communication facilitates face to face contacts more than it ever has. Internet and mobile phones. Uh, help us manage larger and more diverse and personal set of relationships than we ever could ever have before based upon all this technology. <coughs> Glocalized networks is what we call them. So it's interesting stuff. I'm going to cruise through this section pretty fast. Um, how do we, you know, explore relationships with social network analysis? Um, uh, you know, I really don't need to talk about this one, but let's talk about this. What is a network? We can see this is actually a network. These are all people, and we call them nodes. And then this, are, these are called edges or arcs. This contact with another node or individual is an edge or an arc. Um, and then um, the whole thing is called a network, uh, the collection set of nodes. It's called a network. Um, and um, I mean, it, it can be anything, but it, it, these are called nodes because it doesn't have to be people. It could be genes, brain cells, cities, how cities communicate. Um, it, it can be almost anything. Um, and we represent these things in a graph. And you can really visualize where the more communications are happening better than just saying, these guys are a group. This whole thing's a group. Well, this guy's not talking to this guy. So we have more defined uh, analysis of what's going on within the group or the network now. The main goal of it, SNA is detecting and interpreting patterns or structures of social ties. These, this is how we, we see what patterns happen with, with the ties that we have amongst each other. Um, and we can t find out if they exist or not more than we ever have. These patterns are largely hidden unless we look for them using social network analysis. It's very complex, but... Um, there's, they follow rules. These patterns of social ties, they follow rules. Um, I'm not going to get into this. We'll, we'll, we'll get into homophily um, a little bit, but not right now. This is another uh, diagram of social network analysis. It's fascinating stuff. Um, you can click on that link down below if you want to check it out more. Um, you know, how do, how do patterns of social ties, how do they relate to the variables of interest? You know, examples are conflict. Are sparsely connected networks more contentious than des densely knit networks? Um, so, you know, do the ones that have more communication, are they less li liable to have conflict? We've always said that communication is the key. Now we can actually study and see how much communication is happening <coughs> and then compare that to the, gr the networks that aren't getting along or that have conflict. 
Um, it's interesting stuff. Another, these are all little nodes, but they're color coded for different types of things. Um, and this is something that we're going to talk about. And this is so part of social network analysis. This is why I put it in the food um, section that we're going to talk about, which is this study that's a massively famous study. And I'll talk about it. Um, homophily and influence. Um, these are the two network mechanisms of um, that really that we see where influence happens. Um, happiness, poverty, obesity may spread by influence, by homophily, and also shared exposure to similar environment factors such as deprived areas or general happiness environments. So when you see that there's similar attributes with somebody, you're going to have a social connection with them, and then you're going to be more likely to have influence by them because of your perceived similarity. Okay, you might want to replay that to get that, but that is similarities right there. Your perceived similarity. That's a person like me, so I'm going to watch and be influenced by what they do. Okay, that's part of something we can study in social network analysis. The weaknesses of SNA is that they, you know, it's exploratory. Um, we can, we specific hypotheses are really hard. The why is hard to figure out. We can see what is happening. Uh, how it's happening, but the why it happens is it's hard to do um, hypotheses from that. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Here's a little thing for you. Check this thing out. I want you to go to Gephi and download it. Okay? If you, down, if you get download Gephi, you can run a social network analysis of your Facebook, and you will be the only one that gets the report on that. Um, but I might do... Here's an example of network visualization on on um, Facebook, uh, you can see there's like it, this is uh, this guy's uh, network, and he's got people out here that are all on this network and not even connected with this one. Um, I ran mine, and I had networks that since I've lived internationally, I had like an Australian one and a Scotland one, MJC one, uh, and that, and then I could see where they were linking together too. It's fascinating to see the amount of communic and it also judges and tells you how much communication you've had via Facebook with these people. It's an amazing thing. Uh, so uh, here's some questions uh, for you and I'll post whether I want you to do that project or not. Or Does your Facebook network look like a, bound, uh, like a bounded tightly knit group or a sparsely knit fragmented network? Can you identify the subgroups? That's fascinating. And do they overlap or split the network? So anyways, um, yeah, you just click on Gephi and uh, it should take you right to where you want to go um, and uh, yeah and then you can download it for free um, and and it's pretty self-explanatory about how to get it going all right I'm under my 15 minutes so that's cool um, hope you enjoyed the presentation on social network analysis it's a burgeoning field of sociology inquiry and uh, just another reason why sociology is a great major to have I hope that we offer that someday here at MJC <laughs> okay Bye-bye.